Good evening and welcome to MedStar Health and New Old Age Caring and Coping. It's a live webcast. And I'm Jamie Costello from WMAR ABC 2 News here in Baltimore. And we're here tonight broadcasting from the Inn at the Colonnade in dear old Baltimore. And if you're watching us on your computer or your device, I'm looking for your comments or your questions. You can post them in the chat room or MedStar's Health's Facebook or on Twitter. You can use the hashtag AskMedStar. This is quite a topic here tonight. You know, on Valentine's weekend, my wife gave me anti-aging soap, anti-aging cream, shaving cream. And look, today I look the same as I did yesterday, so it must be working. We're going to be talking about a variety of subjects here tonight. Among the topics, Alzheimer's. We're also going to talk about behavioral changes, preventing falls, caring for our elders, and also end-of-life issues. But let's start it right now. Let's meet the esteemed panel that we have with you. George Hanawi is the director. The doctor, Hanawi, is director of geriatrics at MedStar Good Samaritan Hospital, medical director at the MedStar Good Samaritan Nursing Center, and director of the Center for Successful Aging. You will show us how to age gracefully and successfully. Thank you, doctor. Next up, Dr. Elias Shia, Chief of Psychiatry for both MedStar Union Memorial and also the MedStar Good Sam. Thank you, doctor, for joining us. And MedStar Good Samaritan Hospital Senior Physical Therapist, Judy Bopp. Hello, Judy. How are you tonight? Great to see you. Next, Dr. Christopher Kearney, Medical Director of Palliative uh, Medicine for MedStar Health. And lastly, we have Adrian Kirby, a Geriatric Social Worker at MedStar Good Samaritan Hospital. All right, let's start. Dr. Hanawi, First off, just tell us what geriatric care is. We'll start broad. Let me take back the word, the origin of the word. So geriatrics is a Latin word, and actually it's two words. The first one is geron, which is older man, and the second is iatros, which is healer. So it's the healer of the older man. Practically, it's caring for older adults and their unique health care needs throughout the journey of aging, from uh, preventive health to successful aging, all the way to chronic disease management, geriatric syndromes, which are very unique to older adults, going to functional decline and the inability to take care of daily chores, driving that all the way to advanced care planning and end of life issues. Everybody wants to drive. There's nothing wrong with me driving. I can get behind the wheel. I can go out last night on those icy streets and I can make it home to the grocery store in no time. How do, we, how do we stop them from driving before they injure? You know, it's one thing to injure themselves, but if they injure somebody else. Carol Wheatley from the Adaptive Driving Program at MedStar Good Samaritan. How do we know to say, give me the keys? That's an excellent question. And they have done research that has analyzed the crashes that older drivers have had so that they've been able to identify a, a number of different types of problems that become indicators or red flags of when a person needs to be able to think of, um, about stopping driving or stopping altogether. So examples of that would be having difficulty confusing the gas or the brake pedal or stopping for no apparent reason. Thank you, you're driving us all home tonight. Thank you very much. All right, Carol. Let's go to Dr. Shia now. We're gonna talk about, oh, it's a senior moment. I can't remember, where did I put my car keys? Uh, just a matter of, you know, getting a, describe us, doctor, the stages before we're having that senior moment to actually having Alzheimer's dementia. That's, that's a great, uh, great point is, do we get alarmed when we have what we call senior moments and when should we actually do something about it and when is it just a matter of uh, forgetfulness that all of us experience as we go through the day, we are distracted by so many different factors and we have so much to do, especially nowadays, the cell phone is going off, the email is not answered, you have a meeting here, you have to cook, you have to do all of these things. It's easy to forget, so it's very important for us not to be alarmed about these forgetful moments just anyway. When it becomes a persistent matter, when it becomes something that gradually gets worse, when it becomes a matter that others are noticing, when it starts interfering with daily life, when it starts impacting our function, that's when it is probably worth checking into it further. Each year at least 250,000 older Americans are hospitalized for hip fractures and more than 95 percent of hip fractures are caused by falling and for elderly patients a hip fracture can be life-threatening so Judy Bopp has some tips man about the hip the hip hip hip. 
Yeah, well, just the first thing to realize is it's not usual to fall. So it's something that don't expect because you've gotten older that you're going to fall. You shouldn't be falling. Um, and some of the percentages of where falls occur, they're very most likely occurring in your own home. Um, and if they're not in your own home, they can be right outside your home or not far from your home. So one of the first things we need to do is see what we can do to help prevent you from falling. And there are some things that are intrinsically happening that you can't control as well. So some medical conditions, if you've had um, some changes in your cognition, um, your hearing, your vision, then you can't, you have to watch that. Chronic diseases that you have to watch, if you have Parkinson's disease or a stroke, they're obviously risk for falls. But there's also some extrinsic factors, the external things that we can, that can cause you to fall. Things like medications. Are you on too many medications? Do the doctors know which ones? If you see more than one doctor, the interaction between the medications. Alcohol, obviously. Hopefully everyone behaved tonight, but if you mm -hmm. had too much, you're at a risk for falls. Environmental hazards within your home and outside. Things like clutter in your house. They can cause you to fall. With our recent snowstorms, the ice, things like that you have to watch. So they're all things that we can address and help try to prevent you from having falls. Um, so what you can do is make sure you get yearly assessments, have your doctor see you, review your medications. If you wear glasses, get them adjusted each year. Make sure that you can see what you need to do. And then if you have any major issues, your doctor can refer you to a physical therapist to have an assessment for your balance. And in a minute, I'm going to show a little test to do to do try to see. Come you on, want me to do that see. now? Yeah, okay. Come on. See Carol's going to be my assistant right, up here. You're not going to fall down, are you? No. Okay. That's why these right. stools are very risky for me, so I have to watch them today. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the ones that we do, it's a standard test. It's called sit to stand five times. And you just have the person sitting in a chair, no mm -hmm. armrest for them to use. They cross their arms over their chest, okay. and then we time them standing up and sitting down five times, and we have norms as to what the time should be. So Carol, you ready? Yes. Go on up and go. That's one, and down, two, and down. Keep going, quick as you can. Three, and down, four, and down, and five, and I time her. Huh. And if you should, you should be able to do that in about 15 seconds. And anything below that puts you at a risk for falls. The longer the time, the, the higher the risk for falls. So we work on things for exercising to help people so they can do that. So speed of your gait is very important with your risk for falls. But lack of balance, somebody that just does we not have, have plenty balance. of things. Yep, and there's exercises you can do for balance, and we test the same way. <clears throat> we'll do the. Um, feet together test where you have someone stand with their feet together, cross their arms over their chest. They have to stand that way for 30 seconds. You then have them close their eyes and see how they respond with their eyes closed. Because when you don't have that visual input, it then makes it difficult with your balance. Then we can do um, single leg stance where you have someone stand on one foot, cross the arms and time them that way. And again, there are normative data out there that tell us if you're below a certain time, you are at a risk for falls. Man, it's all about flexibility too, how they can, you know. Yep, that's where the, having the physical therapy evaluation to make sure that you have the flexibility of the ankles and the hamstrings and everything. So you have those protective responses that you need in order to protect yourself if you lose your balance. All right, five more for you, Carol. Go ahead. <laughs> the yeah, I'm serious, go, five no, more. No, no, we oh, only no, do it once. Only <laughs> Want. Oh, okay. Only once, only Just once. Be careful, be, be careful. Put in that chair, be careful. Uh, okay, easy. Seconds. Tell us about treating memory loss. How do you treat it? Oh, so the really the first thing is a proper evaluation of memory loss, really to come up with a diagnosis, or at least what you think um, is an appropriate diagnosis. Diagnoses reveal themselves over time. We don't always know as physicians the first time that we meet a patient essentially what's going on. Um, but we follow patients over time. But really the, the first thing is to have someone who is skilled in the evaluation of memory loss and potentially dementia um, to see that person for really a comprehensive workup. And yeah. so at Good Samaritan, um, we are developing a program that's multidisciplinary. That's geriatric medicine, geriatric psychiatry, that's me, along with social work. Um, and we get a lot of history from patients when they come and some informants, so ideally a family member or somebody that knows the patient well. Lots of history. So what mm. have you been seeing? Trouble with remembering recent events, trouble finding words, um, getting lost while driving, 
when did those symptoms start and have they gotten worse over time? And we try to get an idea of functional impairment. So trouble managing medications, trouble with bill paying, because that's really important to know if this is normal aging or not. I functional impairment that really right separates <laughs> normal <laughs> aging from not, this functional impairment. How um, do we and stop it? How do we put the brakes oh, on? Oh, how do we put the brakes on? Um, the biggest piece of advice that I can give um, is to control medical conditions. So what we call vascular comorbidities, so diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, to keep active physically, so regular exercise. That's really the bang for the buck. And to keep active mentally, to try learning new things, just as an example. There's all kinds of different data about specific things like crossword puzzles or luminosity or whatever, but something that you enjoy that's not overly stressful, but that's challenging and can really keep the brain active. But that physical piece, that physical activity, is really key. And along with that, we hope to see things like improvement in blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol. We have some questions. Who's got the great question? Here we go. My grandmother had very severe dementia. She was in her early 80s. I am on 80 is around the corner for me. And um, I have pushed that worry way down mm. there for years, thinking, hmm, I wonder if I'm going to end up with my grandmother's problem. Mm. And um, so I'm very, very interested in this subject. I'm also one of these people that unfortunately, because of blood pressure, irregular heartbeat, I'm on about perhaps six different medications. I have a wonderful, caring GP. She doesn't have that label geriatric, but she, she really looks after her patients. I think the big question is, does this go down the line? Is it passed down generation to generation? I don't know if you, Elias, you want to answer that? Heredity is, is certainly a part of, of dementias in general. Uh, it, it is also part, so we, we think of dementia, maybe I should, I should differentiate a little bit. We talk about dementia as being the global umbrella of those conditions that affect memory and affect thinking and affect our function in general. And Alzheimer's disease is only one type of it. It is nevertheless the most common type, but it's only one type. And there are some genetic components to it. So it is indeed inherited. Weren't they great, our panelists here tonight? Thank you, our experts. We rely on you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's great. So we got to pay bills. I'll never forget anything, and I'll uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, I want to bring up the great Brad Chambers, who is president of MedStar Good Samaritan and MedStar Union Memorial Hospitals, for a few words before we say goodbye. Thank goodbye. You, goodbye. Appreciate it. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of the board of directors of MedStar Good Samaritan Hospital, I want to thank you for all of our members in the audience tonight. Great presentation tonight, and this really adds to what we're doing at Good Samaritan Hospital. It's about educating the community, providing that level of awareness, and I hope that came through tonight with this distinguished panel of representatives that we had here. I am so pleased to provide this level of service to the community on a very important topic because as we see our population uh, growing older, uh, we need to make sure that we're better positioned. So once again, on behalf of the hospital, thank you, and a special shout out to all of our wonderful members of the hospital auxiliary that could be here tonight and could join us here tonight uh, in our audience. So thank you for being here. And as always, I want to thank our wonderful media partnership, uh, WMAR and Jamie, for facilitating tonight. Jamie, thank, thank you, you as sir. always, always for, uh, for being here. We're going to be signing off here uh, shortly, but you could always come to our website at MedStar Good Samaritan Hospital for additional information and look for information on the Center for Successful Aging coming to you shortly here at MedStar Good Samaritan Hospital. I want to thank all of you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you.